Welcome to Enlightened Evolution. I'm Kay. And I'm Christina. We're here to discuss the ebb and flow of our soul's healing and transformation through self-reflection, choosing intentionally, honoring thyself, and following your inner guide. Thank you for joining this safe space with us. Good morning and welcome to Enlightened Evolution with Kay and Christina. Uh, This episode, we're talking about mindfulness. Uh, It's a very important topic, so helpful for your life. So I'm really, I'm really excited about this topic. Um, I wanted to share with you all an update because I know I mentioned, I think in two episodes ago that I was getting Invisalign. Maybe it was longer than that. I had to wait so long to get the actual trays. And I wanted to ask you, when you had it, did you have the little nubs on your teeth? Yeah. And that, it was all, <laughs> listen, I don't want to say it was all there. bad. <laughs> I was just about to say it's all bullshit. I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to um, say anything discouraging, but I'm on my cycle and really get my voice during this time. So I will just be mm-hmm. honest. Yeah. Did, do they do that to you? Did they put the cement on your teeth? Yeah. And yeah. So when I'm only- the person did it that I had, she didn't like shave it enough. And when they weren't on my teeth, I would get, it felt like daggers poking into my gums. And she's like, well, just put the wax on there. I took a nail file bitch and filed that shit down my fucking self because I wasn't about to. Oh my start. God. <laughs> so mine okay so she put she put all the nubs on um she filed them down then the dentist came through and filed them even more so I feel good about that but I'm like I'm only five days into this mm-hmm. and the first two days they were rubbing my gums so raw so if you're not familiar with Invisalign um you have to wear it for 22 hours out of the day News flash. I'm not wearing it while we're recording and we're batch recording today. So (laughs) whatever, it's fine. But anyways, um, when you're not wearing them, you have these nubs on your teeth that are to sit in the retainers to help move your teeth. Mm -hmm. But then they fucking, it feels so weird. They scrape on your gums. My gums are used to it now. The other part is, <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. When I get, I have 40 weeks of retainer, so not a full year, but they were like, oh, you might need revisions at the end. No, thank you. My teeth are already moving actually, and it's only been five days. So I, and they're not even that messed up. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, my retainers have a hook on one side. So up here and down here, because in 12 weeks, I get to put a rubber band on them. So I can't wait for that. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like there was a part of me, you know, going back to internal family systems, there was a part of me that was like, yeah, this is a great idea. This version of me, not loving it. Don't love it, but I've already committed to paying for these, so I'm going to do it. I hate the inconvenience of having to pop them out anytime I want anything other than water. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a lisp with them. That's why I'm not recording with them. It's I did making not me super hear your self-conscious. No? Only when I you haven't... said page, because the G. <laughs> I... I can like hear it in my mind and it's making me so (laughs) self-conscious and I don't love it. Well, (sighs) they, there's pros and cons to them. I did like the fact obviously that you don't have braces on, but for me personally, it's, I'm not responsible enough for them. And I lost, I don't know what they cost now, but years ago, I think I spent over five grand on them and yeah, uh, yeah, I lost them. I've actually told you, I just found my very last retainer the other day and I've miraculously enough, I can still slide it right over my teeth and it, I mean, it hurts like they're tight, but, mm-hmm. but I did have my dentist remove. I said, can you just shave the cement off my teeth? Cause this is awful. That's what I was going to ask you if you ended up going back in and like, yeah. Hey, I'm not doing this. Take these nubs off. Yeah. I did get it done professionally. Um, oh, okay. Mm-hmm, but it was, yeah, that's a lot. Terrible. It's so not fun. Luck. Good luck with that. We'll see if I can see it through. You'll be it's st- giving me anxiety a little bit. 
Yeah. Well, good good luck surviving off water the next 40 weeks. Cause and I, that's like, I, I'm obviously going to lose weight because I love to snack throughout the day. I don't like eating big meals and I'm feeling forced to like, okay, if I'm taking these out, cause you got to brush your teeth every time you got to clean your retainers every time. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, well, if I'm taking them out, I'm going to eat everything I want to eat right now for this meal. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I'm experiencing a lot of hunger. <laughs> yeah, that that was, was super hard Which for me. Which is probably good. <laughs> Such a crazer. <laughs> yeah, he- me too. I like small meals throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Or snacks. Yes. All right. So jumping into mindfulness, um, I have this book. Let me get it close to our video here. It's called Practicing Mindfulness, 75 Essential Meditations to Reduce Stress, Improve Mental Health, and Find Peace in the Everyday. It's by Matthew Soklo. It's S-O-C-K-O-L-O-V. Not sure how to pronounce that. Mm. I was gifted this by um, one of my nurses when I was an assistant nurse manager. She gave it to me as a Christmas gift and it was right after my dad passed. So I wanted to read the little note that she wrote in it. She wrote, Christina, may you find peace and resilience in the new year. I won't mention her name, but honestly, I I want to get her on the podcast as well. She actually owns her own um, resiliency company. Nice. I'm trying to... I think it's called Resilient Professionals. And she basically, I mean, she realized the burnout that was happening in healthcare and she has all these tools for being resilient. Um, So maybe I will reach out to her and see if she would like to come on the pod. She's a really sweet lady. That is sweet. That was sweet of her to do that. I know. That was, Um, I was going to, was that in Georgia or Michigan? Were you Michigan? Michigan, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When I was 2019, yeah. she dated it. it. Says Christmas 2019. Aw, that's so sweet. sweet. <laughs> I love. I wanted to ask gift you. Books. Oh yeah, I'm doing that more and more lately. Um, I love the idea of instead of giving like a card at a birthday party or something, gifting a book and writing a little note in it mm-hmm. as your card. Like, Oh, that's sweet. Yes. Cause I'm going to be honest. Most cards that people give me, I throw them away. I do too. And Unless sometimes... it's like super meaningful. Yeah. I'm going to throw it away probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mindful about my but the, clutter. I, also, Aki. I know. I wish I would have kept more cards from my dad and maybe okay. I do have some somewhere. I don't know. Hmm. Also, he wasn't like, I think a lot of it, I was, uh, I had Jordan put together a jewelry thing for me and my dad had made me a jewelry armoire. He like stained it the color that I wanted. He went and found one and then like made it how I wanted it. Um, But I, I have a bunch of jewelry pieces that I got from him, but I think that it was always like my mom purchasing it and she's like, here, you can give this to mm-hmm. her as her gift. Oh, yeah. That's so typical. <laughs> but I my still, like, hold him too. so dear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is my necklace from my dad, even if he didn't pick it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me think that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you when you first learned about meditation or mindfulness. Because going into the research for this, I was reminded of when I was first introduced to it. Oh, goodness. Uh, I feel like it's, I mean, at least 10 years ago. And it's it's been a work in progress. Like, I'm a work in progress. I, like, know my patterns and my behaviors and my cycle and how it's affected and my triggers. Like, I just... I used I used to not be good at being mindful, you know, or was there any one thing that kind of introduced you to it or it just kind of like slowly crept in? You know, so I went with somebody almost like 10 years ago to this store. It was one of those like it was one like it had the crystals in it and all the sage and it had some of those books in there. And I think it was a chakra book. And so the chakras 
learning about the chakras, it like that's what opened my whole world to um I guess like my spirituality and my beliefs now. Um but it goes it's all like being mindful, it's just it's you versus you all the time. It's never about anybody else. I mean, mm-hmm. pe- you can blame people um, or, you know, people, well, I shouldn't say blame. You can blame them. You, you will suffer if you do that. But I, <laughs> I think that, you know, obviously people can hurt you, but, and have an effect on you. But I, I think being mindful is just the impact that you have on yourself and others. And I think, yeah, I think I started that journey 10 years ago and still evolving, still on my journey, still. Um, You mentioned the internal family systems. I'm halfway through that book right now. Love it. Um, Absolutely love it. I think everybody should read that book. That's great. It's Mm -hmm. really good. I think everyone, like I just, in preparation for this episode, I dove back into this book and I realized um, I I love rereading stuff, especially Mm -hmm. from a different mind frame. I was in a horrible place when I was first gifted this book. So rereading it now, I'm like, oh, so many good things. I mean, he goes into great detail of like just the basics and things. And we're going to touch on that. But then he also offers so many practical meditations to use. Um, But I realized my first introduction to meditation or mindfulness and I'm going to use these terms interchangeably because they are pretty interchangeable. Um, I Did you have to take uh, study skills? Well, I guess I didn't have to take it. I took as like a filler class for my degree. But uh, where we went to college, they offered it study skills. I don't think I took that one, no. It was like one of the, what are they called? The extra classes. Yeah. And so I took it for like an easy A, basically. Mm -hmm. And it was an easy A. But that professor, she would do guided meditations with us. And she would have us all like close our eyes. She would turn the lights off in the classroom. And she would do guided meditations with us. And I had totally forgot about that. Um, And it's crazy because later on, as a nurse, I took care of her mother. And I saw her and I was like, I remember you. But yeah, she was my first kind of intro to it. And then a girl I was in nursing school with got me to go to yoga with her. And so I got more into it and it just kind of snowballed from there. (laughs) I love that. But I wanted to give, yeah, I wanted to give some uh, definitions of kind of what mindfulness and meditation are. So I took some quotes from the book. Um, Mindfulness calls for action. It calls for personal investigation. So like you mentioned, it's all about you and your internal. Um, it can be understood as being present with clarity, wisdom, and kindness. Meditation and mindfulness are usually used interchangeably. Meditation refers to any time you put effort into being mindful and present, 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 not president. Um, this does not just happen on a meditation cushion. It can be in any daily activity. And that's really what this book goes into as well of how to incorporate it throughout your day, which I love. Mm -hmm. I do love that. I also have uh, nine aspects of mindfulness. You were going to say something. No, I I want to hear. Okay. (laughs) Um, So being fully present, taking that time to cultivate what it's like to be present. So not being distracted by the world around you or by future thinking or past thinking, Um, seeing clearly. So cultivating a wisdom to see clearly what you're experiencing in the present moment which could be as simple as like identifying, I'm feeling angry right now. I'm feeling irritable. I'm feeling joy, whatever that might be. Letting go of judgment. And this is a big part. And this is one I still struggle with. Um, Letting go of value judgments. So as you become aware of things you experience. So a lot of times when we experience anger or those uncomfortable feelings, we add a value judgment to it. Like this is a bad feeling. I shouldn't be feeling this way or I need to Mm -hmm. get out of this feeling. And that's not what it's about. It's about experiencing it no matter if it feels good or bad. Yeah. Acknowledging it and just being curious instead of being angry about it and putting that label on it. 
Mm-hmm. That's what I found of being mindful the most. I'm, I find myself taking a step back from the judgment, being curious about things and getting to the root of because of the root of whatever uncomfortable emotion I'm feeling, because regardless of how spiritual and mindful you are, you're still going to have uncomfortable feelings and emotions and interactions with people and triggers all day long. And I've just, I've done so much better about processing through and being non-reactive. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's really avoiding anymore. It's just not putting so much energy into things that it just don't serve me. Yeah, which is one of the aspects of mindfulness is just allowing everything to belong, allowing things to be what they are and not having this urge that you need to change them, which is something I definitely struggle with. What, want um, to, to change things? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I think that, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, wanting to change, like wanting to change how in like a people pleasing way or. um. um like when things when things are going wrong, I want to quickly fix them, whether it's within my own life or those around me. Like I always want to be fixing them. Yeah. Yeah. I Instead can... of allowing them to be. Yeah. So just maybe just accepting comes along with mindfulness, mm-hmm. just accepting things for how they are or people for who they are. And Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's two very short quotes that I reflect on when I catch myself in these moments of wanting to change uncomfortable moments. Um, and I can't remember who, if it was Alan Watts oh, or, I love yeah, or Eckhart Tolle, or it might've been Ram Dass. It was one of those three, but in one of their talks, they said, and this too. So you get fired from your job instead of ruminating on it. You say, and this too whatever comes to you and this too, meaning kind of, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to experience this. It may be difficult, maybe not difficult, but it's part of the process. It's part of this journey that I'm on. The other one is from my Christian background. Um, I, I have this on like a wooden sign on my house and it says it is well with my soul. Oh, I love that. It's um, a very common Christian, I think it's a hymn. Um, It's one of my favorite hymns. And it's kind of wild. Um, Jordan and I both, like every once in a while, we'll listen to some Christian music, even though I don't practice Christianity. There's some of the songs that still, because just because I don't follow Christianity, there's a lot of the messages that I do still follow. Uh, One of them, It Is Well With My Soul. I love that song and I love the message that comes along with it. Um, And just kind of reminding yourself of that in difficult times, like no matter what, it's all good. (laughs) Yeah. Or it is what it is. (laughs) Um, This one kind of ties into it as well. And I'm probably not going to pronounce this word right. Being equanimous like equal, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, remaining balance, uh, bringing the same energy for all situations, basically. Uh, So bringing the same attention to all aspects of what you experience. One I really like is cultivating a beginner's mind. There was a time in my life, probably when I was young and naive, that I felt like kind of like I wanted to be a know-it-all. Mm-hmm. And there's probably still people in my life that think I am a know-it-all. <laughs> I mean, but it's sometimes probably people if, that I work with. Sometimes if you know, you know. Yes. But no, I, but, I, I get what you're saying because sometimes people think they know and some things can go without being said. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I don't know, as I've like had this mindfulness more and more throughout my life as I'm getting a little bit older. Do you find yourself not even being triggered by the same things anymore? Like you don't even need to say what you know, or you don't even need to put them yep. back in their place. It's almost like I used to response to, I used to respond to everything and now I'm like, they'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah I like saying, okay. And smiling has saved me 
so much grief and wasted mm-hmm. energy. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, actually having the peace behind it. Cause I think mm-hmm. before I, I maybe saw that modeled by people and I was like, Oh, that's how I'll respond. But I would say, okay. And then I would ruminate on it. Yeah. So it's really the piece that goes behind it of, okay, I'm yeah, good with that. I've been so much more, I would say in the past, probably like six months I've noticed they, and it's usually at work. It will with my kids too, because I mean, kids are irritating, but certain things will pop up or they'll say certain things or do certain things. And it's, I, I witness myself not even being reactive to that anymore. Like it's not even dysregulating my nervous system anymore. The things that used to, or the things, even if I wouldn't, even if I, got myself to the point of self-control of, okay, I don't need to speak on these things anymore. I would still be riled up inside. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't even feel that anymore. So it it is a practice. It is, it, it, it takes a while to not, to not even feel certain triggered and be mindful of things. They're not reacting. And that's important. Yeah. That's important to mention about mindfulness in general. It's a continued practice and you should not get frustrated with yourself or think that you need to reach some certain level, just make it a practice to continue to improve on. And that's, Mm -hmm. that really should be your goal. Um, And that's what like cultivating a beginner's mind, it's embracing learning new things and embracing the fact that you don't know it all. I love that. I don't know it all. I love, and (sighs) bringing it back to religion. Like I used to think that I had to have a solid knowledge of this is what happens when you die. And this is how the world was created and all these different philosophical things. I love saying, I don't know what happens when we die or (laughs) just different things. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Like it doesn't give me fear that I don't know what happens. And I would be kind of insane to say that I do know what happens because none of us know what happens. Mm. There's tons of theories, but it's the greatest kept secret. Yeah. Um, and, and this is applicable to even smaller things. Like even in healthcare, like healthcare is always evolving. We think that like we get into things and we're like, okay, I know everything there is to know, or we have a good idea. And then new treatments come out, new science is developed and we have to change how we do stuff. So yeah, especially at work and especially in healthcare, it is scary when new doctors and nurses come in and they just know everything and their ego is massive. It's wild. It is. And I like, I've been a nurse for a little while now and I still walk into work every day. Like I don't know shit. (laughs) And it, it always crosses my mind. Like, am I going to know what to do? And I have the confidence to know that I will know what to do or to be able to ask Mm -hmm. great questions or pull the team together to help me. But it is, it's scary. Really? The people that think that they know everything. (laughs) Yes. And. Oof. (laughs) Um, We kind of already mentioned being patient is a part of mindfulness, Mm -hmm. not clinging to specific outcomes, but just allowing yourself to progress the way you're going to progress. Um, Making a friend with yourself is part of mindfulness. So starting to show kindness towards yourself. And that really comes into that judgment as well. You know, not, not judging, not judging yourself when like if I sit down to do an actual seated meditation and all these fears and things start popping in my head, not judging myself for, oh, you can't even focus for seven minutes to do a meditation, but showing kindness to myself of, oh, those things are really stressing you out. Let's release them for now and we'll come back to them later. Yeah, I love that. I think that's that's the one of the biggest things that I've gained just being gentle with myself. And I'm, I'm mindful of like, you. we've talked about parts therapy of the parts of me that are hard on myself. And it's just like, okay, today I don't have that energy. I don't feel that well. I do have some things I need to do, but it's okay if I rest. Mm-hmm. I don't need to listen to that inner critic, no matter what it is. Or if, you know, 
I think a lot of times in romantic relationships, it's the hardest to be mindful in those because we're, mm-hmm. tr- we're triggered so much emotionally. I think you and I could give each other solid advice all day long. Oh, I would handle it like this. And you would tell me the same exact thing. And we can say it from a non-emotional standpoint. And then when once you get in the heat of it, yeah, you're <laughs> like, oh, I said that. <laughs> I said that I shouldn't have, I should have, or I should have said that I should have expressed myself. I should have set that boundary or whatever it may be. I think that's when it's probably the hardest for me personally is when I'm in romantic relationships to be mindful. Mm -hmm. I recognized the other day and I've said this before. I think I made a TikTok about it. Don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to. Because I remember one time... (laughs) I remember one time I asked Jordan a question about like which body type he preferred. And I did not love the answer to that. Um, And I was, I found myself going to ask him something about myself. Like, am I blah, blah, blah. And I came to the realization before I blurted that out. I am my own worst critic. And the thing, the thoughts I have about myself are probably worse than what anyone else has about me. Absolutely. And I'm already dealing with that inner critic. I actually don't need to ask anyone else what they think about me because I think we've got it covered. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just, and not only that, but like, I like on this date later, I thought about sending him like a picture of my outfit I'm going to wear. Like, do you like it? Actually, no, I'm going to wear it. Cause I like, it doesn't like, I hope that he doesn't hate it, but I don't need to ask you your opinion of it. No. Or how I'm going to do my hair today. Like, I don't know. Like, just, I don't need anybody else's validation. I can feel good on my own. Um, Yep. If I like it. And that can be hard to to Mm -hmm. sit in that. Yeah. Which brings me to the ninth aspect of mindfulness, which is honoring yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And starting where you are. Like, being okay with where you're at and making progress and falling back. One of the things that really threw me for a loop this week, and I've already kind of, I mentioned part of it to you in our text messaging. Um, So I'll bring it up briefly here, but something happened yesterday that also triggered it. Um, So I recently saw a picture of a bully from high school. And so I've been working through so many major traumas And I've been making good progress. And I really did not know that the bullying that happened to me as a young person, I didn't think it really had much effect on me because of all the other traumas that happened. But seeing this picture of this bully brought back this flood of emotions of like, oh, I actually have more work to do here, Mm -hmm. which can be frustrating because you're like, oh, I'm making so much progress and I'm I'm doing all these things and I'm processing all these things. And then I'm realized, girl, <laughs> now that we've dealt with these things, we got a whole nother layer of things to deal with. Yes. And yesterday I went to a pool party with people I work with and there was a sense of some cattiness, kind of that feeling like when you walk into a room and everyone stops talking because they were probably just talking about you. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. And I, I felt that when I was there and I'm, it felt gross. You know, I'm going to side note. I can't believe that you took personal time to go to a work party. It was during work hours. Oh, so, so you got paid to be in the pool. Correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> correct. <All right. laughs> okay, that makes better sense. It wasn't <laughs> personal time. I was home by five o'clock. Okay. <laughs> We have like monthly team building things that we do. And that was our team building thing. That's nice. But only four people were there out of our team of, I think we have 13 or 14 people. So, I mean, it was fine. The girl's house was gorgeous. It gave me great ideas for when we finish our basement. Um, Mm -hmm. But I just left feeling kind of like. Mm, I just sat with some mean girls kind of deal. I don't know. I'm sorry. There wasn't like any shit talking going on. And it could have totally been me internalizing it because I, that's the other part of it. Like with this Invisalign, I'm becoming 
that self-conscious, I'm remembering what it was like when I was 12 to 14 and had braces and how self-conscious I was and getting made fun of for having braces. And it's bringing me back to that mindset, which it's frustrating, but it's fine because it's something I need to work through. And I'm, I'm kind of excited to work through it. I think that's the, that's the hardest part of having relationships. I feel like that sometimes too, like for whatever reason, they don't like you. Like there's something about you they don't like. And it's like, like everyone wants to be liked, but also is it, is it your intuition though? To, like you're probably spot on. They probably were talking shit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I mean, two of them have been known to talk shit before. So that yeah. is possibly the more mindful you possibly. become in the present moment. I think the, your, in, your intuition increases. When you stay mm-hmm. in the present moment, Absolutely. when you're constantly dwelling on the past or constantly anxious about the future, I think it gets misconstrued on and and your ability to see things, you know. Yeah. What uh, benefits have you noticed from practicing mindfulness? Inc- like an increase information, like processing speed. Um. Mm. When things, whether, you know, when interact, I'll say interactions, it's mostly interactions. Like I'm not, I can be pretty mindful and at peace when I'm just sitting by myself, but interacting with the outside world, uh, as I've been practicing mindfulness, I can quickly move through triggers, not dwell on a very specific thing somebody said or a way somebody made me feel. It's like not attached to it, not attached to that feeling. Um, I don't want to say this in like a negative light, but sometimes you can be like, you know, fuck that, fuck them, move on. It doesn't need to affect you, <laughs> you know, anymore yeah. today. Um, reduce, r- you know, rumination, which kind of is pulled into the first thing I said, uh, stress reduce my anxiety and stress has gone down 80%. I would say my memory has, it increases my memory being more mindful and in the present moment. Absolutely. Uh, the ability to stay focused, less, yeah. um, less emotionally reactive to things. Um, That's a huge one. Something I've really realized being a people pleaser and judging myself and feeling ashamed and feeling guilty about things that that's a me problem. And I can quickly recognize when somebody is upset with me for a certain reason. Is it something I actually did or is that a you problem? Because I'm no longer in a people pleasing state of mind. I've developed, I think being mindful helps you through whatever type of religious practice you have or the resources or online content, your therapist, you find ways of developing more skills for self-observation. And absolutely. I sometimes it's hard to admit to yourself what you observe. I think that falls into that. Um, but I've gotten better at just loving and accepting myself, giving myself grace and just being staying in a more curious mindset and like my playful inner child wanting to learn more about myself and go deeper within myself and pull apart those layers, like you said, than being angry and judging and dwelling. And so I, it, it's more of like a playful thing. Like, why do I think like this? Why did I react like this? And it's yeah, also, you're... it's also interesting for me to observe and be curious about other people I truly love and care about and try to understand them deeper too, because I mean, it's hard, it's really hard to understand yourself. And so, oh yeah, and we're all wounded. We're all trying to heal. So trying to get to a deeper place within myself and have grace and understanding, it's a given me the ability to see people in a much different light, uh, greater satisfaction in relationships. When you become more mindful, your immune system, I think is stronger. Knock on wood. I think I've been, I haven't been sick once. I don't think in 2024 yet. 
That's awesome. Um, I've literally, my work group text thread is just people after people. Oh, I just tested positive, positive for strep. Oh, I just tested positive for COVID. It's like constant. I was really, I w- I'm always interested in the like scientific parts in how the actual psychological effects are health. And I was really interested to see how mindfulness can improve your digestion and your immune system. Yeah. I think, well, I mean, that's all we could do a whole episode on, (laughs) on your digestive enzymes and how your gut affects your brain. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last thing I have as far as the benefits is the increased intuition when you just stay in the present moment more. And it's hard to stay in the present moment, really. I, I'm such a planner and a list maker and a dreamer and looking forward to things and you get it in your mind of how certain things are going to go. I really had to let go of like when you make a plan for something, be open to things, uh, having to readjust the plan or having to, I don't know, go along with something else, not even like a backup plan, but just be open to like, the change and the shifts that happen, you know, you have it in your mind how you want a certain thing to go. And then, well, your flight is now going to be delayed eight hours and you're going to have to change your whole itinerary. And, you know, it's that, that sucks, you know, like that has really upset me before. Oh yeah. That's one of the things I've listed is it helps with creative problem solving Mm. because it helps you to kind of pause in that moment and think instead of running with your anxiety, stop. And it gives you tools to kind of stop and think and say, okay, what can I do? Yeah. I think for me, what I always tell myself when something doesn't go as planned, because it would give me like severe anxiety Like I remember one time I got all dressed up to go out and the guy I was going out with just mentioned to me, hey, would you rather just stay in and watch a movie instead? It's like, bitch, I just got. I've already gotten ready. Yeah. And it was just like, what the fuck? Like it irritated me so bad. But maybe he like the way I was talking or he was just trying to be like helpful. Like, hey, sounds like you're stressed out. He might have sensed your anxiety of like getting ready and all that. Would you rather just take (laughs) a very chill night at home doing nothing like snacking out in our pajamas? And so like the whole thing just like made me not even want to go anywhere at all. I don't want to watch. Yeah. I don't want to do anything with you now. But now I quickly tell myself like okay, this disruption in my plans is just saving me from something else. So what is that saying God's redirection is God's protection? Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. So that, that's something kinda, like that. That's kind of the mindset I have now when things don't go exactly my way as they have planned. I'm just like, okay, this is just leading me somewhere better. Yeah. And it's not even like a thought anymore. It's just like quickly shifts where I'm. So I'm so glad I, I kind of healed from that mindset and that being like attached to the outcomes. And that's, I think it's important. Like you and I have been putting years of work into this. So I don't want anyone listening to feel like they need to be at a certain spot tomorrow with it. Mm -hmm. Like it's all progress. It takes years. That's one of the things I'm a very much instant gratification kind of person. I want to know the quickest way to get something accomplished. Yeah. Things that take time and dedication aren't my best things that I do. (laughs) So yeah, that's probably why I don't work out (laughs) as much as I should. (laughs) Yeah. So please know that it is, it's a practice. You're going to do great at it. Sometimes you're going to fall back on it sometimes. And leaving out the judgment is like the biggest thing you can do is not judging yourself for where you're at in it. I did, um, I wanted to kind of read through some of the mindfulness practices in here, if that's okay. Yeah. Let me hear them. Um, let me start with the most simple one. I, I recommend this for anyone that's starting mindfulness or meditation. This one is titled Finding the Breath. And I really like in his book, he'll tell you how many minutes this is going to take. Oh, that's um, nice. 
And he also gives like little intros of like when you would want to use this technique or whatever. So for finding the breath, he says, find a comfortable position for the body, usually sitting or laying. Um, you may sit on a yoga mat, meditation cushion, whatever's comfortable to you. Gently allow your eyes to close. If you're listening to this and you're driving, please don't do that. <laughs> uh, if you're comfortable with your eyes open, you know, some people aren't comfortable being in an open room with their eyes closed. Try focusing on something you can kind of rest your gaze on. The idea is to minimize distractions in your practice. And then bring your awareness to your abdomen, relaxing the muscles there. See if you can feel the natural rising and falling with each breath. Imagine the body is breathing itself so that you're not doing it. From the navel around the obliques, notice the movement with each breath. Take a few deep breaths in like this. And then move your awareness to your chest as you inhale, turn Tune into the expansion of your lungs, the rising of the chest. As you exhale, feel the contraction and movement. Um, I'm just kind of skipping through some parts here. It says, now bring your awareness to your nostrils. Feel the temperature of the breath that moves through your nostrils um, and feel how it might tickle the different parts of your nose and back. Um, and then rest your awareness on the body breathing in one of these three spots, wherever feels comfortable, and just focus on that in and out. Uh, what else does he say? And then once you're kind of ready to come out of that, bring your awareness into your daily life. So any kind of mindfulness practice is really about becoming aware of each small element, um, each simple element the further you break it down, the, the more in the moment you become. I had my um, eyes closed and followed along and that was peaceful. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, lo I, I love that. I love having those breath exercises where it walks you through um, relaxing specific muscles in your body. I don't realize the how body scan. Yes, I... I need to do more of those more often. My neck has hurt for like two weeks. That is a great thing to do when you feel, especially your body's tensing up. Mm -hmm. um, he's got body scan in here. There are tons of YouTube videos that offer quick body scans. I usually, you know, if you can't lay flat, you know, wherever you are, you can do it. But I love to lay flat and like scan each part of my body and release the muscles because you don't realize you're tensing in places that you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always helped. Um, he also, he goes into like cooking mindfully. So, you know, a lot of the times we're busy people, right? Um, we're rushing through the day. We're thinking of the next thing we got to do. You know, I got to go grocery shopping. I got to do this. Got to pick up the kids from school. Got to take them to practice. Got to do all these things. And we don't take the time to be mindful in the moment. And when you think about it, you might be like, oh, well, that's too stressful. Like I got so many other things I need to do. I don't have the time to be mindful about each step that I take, but really you do like, what are you spending your time doing? You're probably ruminating on other things or mm -hmm. thinking about all the things you have to do in the future. You already know the things you have to do in the future. Let that go. You're going to do them. And if you're a person like me that sometimes forgets, make a list. <laughs> Yeah. If you got it on a list, you can forget about it. You're, you can go back to your list whenever you need to know what you need to do next. But he talks about like with um, cooking and mindfulness. So before you even go to grab your supplies, envision the meal you're about to cook. Envision what it's going to smell like, what it's going to taste like. How's it going to look? How are you going to prepare it? Then go and grab your ingredients. Take the time to, you know, if you're opening up a bag of parsley, what does that smell like? Uh, you're crushing some garlic. What does that smell like? How does it feel in your hands? Um, the sound of the sizzle on the pot. Um, all these little elements of being present in that moment. And it may seem silly, like, okay, why do I need to focus on things, on these little things. Um, but these practices bring you into the other benefits of mindfulness. So 
all those other benefits that we just mentioned, it may not seem like it, but practicing being in these tiny little moments helps you to reduce your stress, helps you to improve your memory and focus. Um, not to say that every time you go to cook, you should be doing this. Do what works for you. I I don't remember where I heard this information from. And I don't do it as often as I should. Um, this was a good reminder. So when you're cooking, think about the process that fruit or vegetable had to go through to get to your counter. Where did it come from? Where did it grow? Who picked it? Who processed it? Who, how did, who placed it on that shelf for you to grab? And just like the journey of your food. And this could be a whole nother different conversation too, but that brings you to a place to be more mindful of how you nourish your body. Uh, especially with like meat and dairy products and the sources you're getting those from or, you know, fast food in those places. Oh, yeah. And in that, like when you're thinking of, you know, the people that pick this and all these different things, kind of sending them love and light during that time of like, mm -hmm. thank you for doing that job so that I could have this fresh fruit today for my meal, which also benefits you when you step into gratitude, mm -hmm. you produce more serotonin and dop dopamine. Yes. The other part of it too, going into it is setting those intentions. And I don't do this as often as I should. Um, there's tons of videos of people talking about just speaking your intentions into your water. I, yeah. I've and, seen yeah. yeah. And you, saying like, I, I want this water to nourish my body. Um, do you remember whatever that cup? it might be? Do you remember that cup you got me? It has oh, my yeah. name printed on it and it's like all the chakras are on there and it's like, I am love. I am, I don't even know everything that it said, but I am present. I am kind or I love that cup. Yeah. That's a good one to help you remember to kind of mm -hmm. speak those things. Yes. And he has like, um, eating mindfully. So I guess that's kind of part of cooking mindfully too, but like taking the time to really taste your food, the texture, all those different things. Um, he has a lot in here about unhooking from your thoughts, stopping rumination. Um, he has a whole section for different moods and different mindfulness practices to do with those. So if I'm experiencing fear, what are some things I can do? And a lot of them have little uh, mantras to go mm -hmm. with them. That was another benefit, I think, of being mindful. I can quickly get to the root of my negative emotions. Like, this is happening yeah. right now. I feel insecure because I'm afraid because this happened to me in the past. And what I'm experiencing right now within my anxiety doesn't really, I don't really have anything to support why I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, something happened to me the other day that was really it was like an aha moment mm -hmm. and it's from practicing mindfulness um I listened to a song I posted a tiktok video about this but I listened to a song that was very emotionally triggering and I was crying and I was feeling these deep emotions and immediately my brain was like okay, we need to turn this off. Let's switch mm -hmm. to something else. So I started thinking about all the things I needed to do for the podcast. And I caught myself in that moment. And this is where mindfulness comes in. I was able to catch that switch. And it was the first time I actually like recall being able to catch that switch of my mind going into disassociation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, actually, we're going to we're going to continue to process these feelings. <laughs> we're not going to jump to something else to escape these feelings right now. And we're going to sit with this and that's OK. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I think I can understand that. I think that, yeah, there's times where it's like, OK, I can be strong right now. I don't have to feel like this. And it's not even mm -hmm. about being strong or being weak. It's about your feelings being valid. And yeah, it. It's it's therapeutic to just sit there and cry sometimes. I do it. More so like during my period. But <laughs> I think that's a time of release anyways. So I just yeah. I just like I like allow myself to do that now. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We all should. Mm-hmm. 
What else do you have on mindfulness? I came across this um, blog on Pinterest, Lovely Holistic Living. And I don't know if there's, I think there's a way for you to attach them, but there's a bunch of just really awesome journal prompts to become, oh, it's healingsoulfully.com. Sorry. (laughs) Um, A bunch of journaling prompts to become more mindful and just really get to know yourself. I, I don't, I mean, I could read all 23 if you'd like me to, but I don't see. (laughs) <laughs> do you want to share a couple that you might find? Yeah. Interesting? What are three things you can start doing today that will help you align you with living the life of your dreams? What is most important? What is most important to you in this life? Relationships, career, family, travel, experiences, objects, etc. Why do you feel an attachment to these things? From your, mm. from your childhood, do you have any memories that stick out? Why do you think those specific memories are the ones you remember? Do you feel any specific ways when you're thinking about these things? I like that yeah, one. Yeah, so these are just a I few. Need to do that one. Um, when someone asks you who you are, what do you say? Mm. Within the previous answer, did you include your name, age, and job title? Do you think that's who you truly are, or are you more than that? If you, and then it goes to the third, if you had to explain who you are without using your name, age, and job title, parents, significant other, where you live, et cetera, what would you say? So take out all the physical aspects and then find a way to describe yourself. A lot of times. This was something that came up when we did our intros for this podcast. And I was like, how do we, Mm -hmm. how do we introduce ourselves? I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's hard, like words, a lot of times devalue what we feel and what we try to express and, but it's, yeah, but it is something to think about. Like, who are you beyond all these physical things that you're in, like, you're responsible for? Mm Mm-hmm. I love that. I need to journal more. I do too. I do it more so just to, like, purge and release or like my affirmations. I don't like I used to journal. I really, I feel like my memory is slipping. Sometimes I should just journal what I do every day. So I remember, but same, (laughs) same. All right. Any, anything else? I don't have anything else. I don't either, except for that. I highly recommend this book. I'm sure it's Oh, it's price right here, $16. Very cheap. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon or wherever books are probably sold. (laughs) Love that. Well, thank you, everybody, today for listening. You can find us on all social media platforms. Yes. Uh, Make sure to like, subscribe, share us with people that you love. Namaste. Namaste. 